Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Well, I have something that is one of the most requested videos or definitely most requested discussion item in the comments of all my other videos on the Ninja Foodi oven. And that is how to clean the thing. So stick around and let's try some different options. All right, so if you've been watching my Ninja Foodie videos for a while, and if you've left any comments or read through the comments, you'll see that I don't really clean the oven. The official Ninja Foodie kitchen oven videos, there's a couple on them made from the company, and they say to clean after every use. And I suppose some of you do that, and I had a mocking tone, <laughs> sorry about that, but that's just not the way I roll. I just use the oven and, it gets dirty. We're at the point where it really needs to be cleaned. Our main oven, we run the self-cleaning feature all the time, but the Ninja oven, as you all know, is small, tight, difficult to get your hands in, difficult to try to clean. But we found some incredible bagels at a Jewish deli, and my wife likes the onion bagels, and they are piled with just so many little onion pieces that there is no way that they're not spilling all over the oven and hard to clean out and just difficult. And it's causing now, most times we cook, for things to start smelling like the onion. Not an entirely bad smell if you like onion, but you don't want everything to smell that way. So I'm rambling, I'm getting on with it, but I'm gonna try a few options. Because if you're like me, you've already been searching YouTube on how to clean the oven, and of course there's the chemical way, but we don't wanna do that. And then of course there's baking soda and vinegar and barkeeper's friend and some of those things. And I'll probably end up doing a little bit of that and show you, go on your journey, go on the journey of cleaning the oven with me using those. But I'm going to try one thing first. <clears throat> I'm going to behave like it has a self-cleaning feature. It doesn't technically. And a self-cleaning oven operates like 500 degrees Celsius or over 900 degrees Fahrenheit when you've got the self-cleaning oven. But I did do a little bit of research. And if you run the oven at a solid 500 degrees or more for an hour or more, one and a half to three hours, most things said, that that might help. And I'm going to try that because this dual heat oven gets that hot. So let's give that a try first. All right, here is our oven. I've moved it out to the center of the counter so I have more room to work on it. It normally lives in that space there. But this is a more open area. And you can see all the different bread, crumb, toast stuff. Yeah, it's bad. And it's embarrassing. It's dirty. Yeah, look at that. Very dirty. These things clean up easily, so I'm going to put that in the sink. They're crumb trays. They say they clean. They don't. They're horrible. We've tried to clean. We've scratched it. These can be replaced, though. If you're a person that likes to keep your oven just pristine, you can buy replacements of these on Ninja's website. But there's a lot of difficulty trying to get around these. First of all, it is unplugged. Please unplug first. But these heating elements we have to be very careful with and they're in the way and this dual heat oven does not have the back door that opens. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, when you flip it up, the original 100 series, this end, this side popped open and then you could clean it, get in there more easily than this small opening here. So yeah, they made it more difficult to clean which means I'm less likely to do it because I'm not gonna clean after every use. I'm just not. So the first thing I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna get a vacuum hose in there very carefully and I'm going to vacuum up the more, um, you know, crumbs and little pieces of onion so that I'm not wasting my time moving those around with anything.
Okay, you can see I used a little brush down there because in the door area, um, crumbs fall in there and then they get a little greasy so they stick. And uh, so we're trying to clean that out. Some little features in here that are a little difficult. So the vacuuming, you know, I heard it. They got a bunch of little chunks out, but that does not clean. Let's lift this up, get more light in there. That does not clean all that dirty, greasy, gunky splatter. Okay, I'm gonna be realistic with you. I do not expect that the self-cleaning um, option that I'm gonna try is gonna work. I don't have high hopes for it, but I really wanna try to avoid having to scrub. I've got big hands, getting those hands in there to tight corners and doing all that stuff that will hurt. After a while, I'm older, my hands just don't hold up with that kind of fine motor scrubbing pressure. So of course I'm gonna try some options first and uh, and we're just gonna see. But that's what this is, this is a journey. I know some of you call me the Ninja Foodie Guy and my videos are doing really well, but honestly, I just bought one of these like you and I'm just trying to figure out how to use it as well. So let's give this a try. I'm gonna set it at the highest temperature for run it for about two hours and we'll see let it cool down completely before I put my hands inside there, see if I can wipe out any details with some, you know, a, a soft cloth and just some water or vinegar. We'll see if that will work. If that doesn't work, then we'll go on to some of the other options of scrubbing and really putting a little more effort into it. Okay, I plugged it back in. I have taken all the trays out because I don't want the trays to get in the way or be overheated. Often the wire racks don't do well at super high temperatures for long exposures. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this on, set the mode to dual heat. Um, I don't think it really matters what mode we're at other than let's see what one allows us the highest temperature. Okay, I think 500 is the highest temperature. Let's try, let's try griddle and see what, what the highest temperature is on that. Oh, see, that's only 450. Let's see what temperature fresh pizza will take us at. Yeah, so I think 500 is gonna be the highest temperature we can get. So we'll just stick with the fresh pizza. Time. We're gonna do two hours and let's go ahead and start. Now, just remember the outside of this gets very hot. Please do not touch this, set anything on it. Uh, let kids around it at all while you're cooking for two hours at 500 degrees. All right, let's get it started and we'll come back and a little over two hours because we have to let it cool down as well and we will check it out. Meanwhile, we're gonna try to do this. We're gonna work on this uh, crumb tray just a little bit. I do not expect again that it's gonna get pristine. I've tried a number of different products over the years. I've got the Dawn Heavy Grease Soaker. Um, we're gonna try baking soda. We're just gonna see what's gonna work the best. All right, first attempt. Dawn Platinum Power Wash. We just spray, we let it soak for a little while, and then we'll come back and, well, they say just wipe it off. But this is not just wipe off level. There's gonna be a little bit of elbow grease put into this, but let's just let this soak for a good while, and then we'll come back and check it out. Okay, as expected, the Dawn Power Wash didn't even begin to deal with this. So I'm gonna try Barkeeper's Friend and a good scrubby and we'll see how that works. Okay, it just finished two hours and the light's on in there and you could see it didn't do it. I was hoping that it would, you know, cause it to just burn and crust and flake off like the white powder on a self-cleaning oven. But no, so I'm gonna let it cool down and then we're gonna try another option. Okay, I've been trying a few different things. One is I tried various cleansers with a ball of foil and that got a little bit of off, but nothing major. We're, we're watching internet stuff as well and trying to figure out a bunch of different options. 
So I just went and got some Easy Off, which I'm not gonna use inside the oven because I don't want the chemicals there. But for the pan, that's fine. It's been soaking for 15 minutes and I'm gonna use an SOS or Brillo pad and do a bit of scrubbing and we'll see how it comes out. Okay, I've done some scrubbing with the Brillo pad or the SOS and uh, clearly the um, Easy Off ate into some of that. And I understand that it's not supposed to be used on aluminum. This might be aluminum. I just don't care that much about this particular tray. Just trying to see what works. SOS actually ended up being the best to scrub a lot of it off. And I'm just not gonna go beyond this. This is perfectly fine for our needs. Just wanted to see what works. Um, again, this is a replaceable item if you really want it to be like brand new. I really wish they would make this with more of a non-stick coating uh, as opposed to this tray that clearly everything just bakes onto so easily. Okay, what to do inside the oven. Diane used a little bit of Comet on here, but I and it worked, it worked nicely, but I don't wanna get back in there with the powder residue of stuff into any of these vents. And so I just don't think that it's really gonna ever get super clean, which is not what you want all here if you're watching this, but what I am gonna try are these Mr. Clean Magic Erasers. I know that it will work on the glass really well and some of this kind of stuff, um, the heat that gets with some oil and bakes it on. I don't know how well it will work inside there, and even though this does obviously have some chemicals in it, it's easy to rinse out as opposed to spraying easy off or using a cleanser inside there. So we will see how it works. Okay, so I'm using the magic eraser and it is lifting it right off on this smooth metal out in front. And going around the little rubber stops is challenging and this stuff disintegrates so it's kind of an interesting product to work with and depending on how detailed you want to be um, it it kind of works on this lighter sort of layer of the baked on grease it certainly works on the glass which is really nice but you can see rubbing along here it lifts it right off but as you go inside on this more baked on, um, I just don't see it doing a whole lot. Let's try a white one, a brand new one and see. Let's try a brand new one and see what we can see when we rub down there. Yeah, it's, it's breaking it down. I don't know, folks, if this is worth it. For those of you that are really into wanting your oven to be super clean, I just don't have an answer for you because I don't have the patience for this kind of scrubbing. This is falling apart. I suppose I could just use, let's see, with the SOS without the soap in it. Let's see what that does. Yeah, that works, but that's a lot of scrubbing, but that is taking, taking it off. Frankly, I don't know that you need the chemicals, you just need the elbow grease. But I can't see in there with what I'm doing. real easily at least. There's lots of crusted on 
food. Those onions that I was telling you about. Way back there. Again, you have to be very careful of these heating elements. They're shielded and protected, but they are kind of a glass, so you gotta watch, watch out. Okay, I flipped it up to look. It's hard to get in here, but the elements at the top are not shielded in the metal. So there's a glass one here, there's one there and one down there. And so you really, I don't know how fragile they are, but I really don't want to find out. So please proceed with caution, whatever you do. There's been some positive effect knocking down some of the heavy. You can see down in that corner, there's all the crusted food. I'm gonna pull out the vacuum again now that I've kind of knocked it. We're just gonna try to go from there. Trying to get all the crumbs out. I'm using this cake spatula to push some paper towels under the elements to pick up any residue in there because your hands do not fit under there. So that ended up being a useful tool. <clears throat> okay, so I've wiped things out as much as I feel like I'm prepared to clean the oven, but I still wanna get all the residue out from the Mr. Clean or the SOS pad uh, or um, just anything that got in there as I was washing things out. And I want to clean it up with the vinegar, which will also sanitize and get all that out of there. And so that will be pretty good. All the different shows I see say use a micro cloth, microfiber cloth that'll help pick things up well. Um, you could put it in a spray bottle. I'm just gonna soak the rag a little bit and do a wipe out inside. And then I'll show you the finished project. It's not exactly where, you know, it's not like brand new, but it's shockingly further along than I anticipated. So I'm, I'm pleased. Let me show you the inside. I've got it lifted up so that light can be seen in there better. Obviously, it is not perfectly clean. But wow, what a difference that did. And if I wanted to take the time and use the SOS pad in there more, I certainly could knock off a lot more. The recommendation would be is if you do really want a perfectly clean oven, then you do need to clean it more often so that it doesn't get baked on like that. And maybe even as often as Ninja says on their video, every time you use it. Not going to be the case for me. What I will say, though, is that the crumb tray does need to be pulled out before you flip it up. Because what happened here is we didn't do that. And all the little onion chunks and breadcrumbs would be all over the tray. And then you flip it up and it knocks it back into that back corner and then becomes baked on. And so a lot of my time cleaning was that very back bottom corner. Now let's clean up the outside. All right, now time to clean the outside. I'm gonna take that microfiber cloth that has the vinegar on it. I'm gonna do a wipe up of all the residue and then we're gonna use hydrogen peroxide um, to try to really clean it and get that. You can get, um, stainless steel cleaners, um, but I'm trying to offer an option that's not chemical, that's not a special purchase. You can get a bottle of hydrogen peroxide for less than a buck in most places. All right, I did the vinegar. You can see it still has some fingerprints and different stuff, but that got the bulk of the mess off. Now we're gonna use our hydrogen peroxide, which we, it didn't come with the spray thing, did it? No, yeah. I stick a spray bottle of spray nozzle onto the bottle right from the store and make sure that you do store it in a dark area that's why it's in a dark bottle it can't be exposed to light yeah so uh ninja says not to spray directly onto the machine i i'm supposing because they don't want to get any liquid put into the electronics um and so i'm going to spray onto my rag and then wipe it down Always wiping with the grain. Stainless steel. Okay. 
I think that looks pretty good. Um, Flip her up. Yeah, let's look at the bottom. I'm not spraying on the electronics. There we go. Okay, we're gonna put it back in its spot, run a heat cycle just to kind of dry everything up, and it looks so much better. All right, it's back home and it looks good. Um, I did end up, the hydrogen peroxide cleaned it up nicely. Uh, we already own this product and it's got a little bit of polish in it, which on stainless just looked a little nicer, gave it a, a better finish on it. Um, but was it necessary? So let's see if we can see inside. So much better. Let me put the trays and racks back in there and then we'll do a final, final heat up. All right, there it is. Nice and shiny and clean with all its trays and, uh, and racks in there. Looks good. Looks great. I'm happy with that. I hope you are too. Obviously, you can keep going a little bit more with a scrubber, but it seems to me that an SOS pad, Brillo pad, actually without the soap, just some, um, some coarse um, steel wool, probably is gonna be the best if you want to avoid chemicals. All right, hey, thanks for watching. I, I, hope, I hope you enjoyed this. This was a long time coming. And, uh, and so I hope that this really becomes useful to you on how to clean out one of these ovens. It's no easy task, I'm not gonna lie. It's, it's nothing fun about it. Of course, scrubbing anything is not a matter of fun, is it? But it's, it's not um, something that you just really want to do. And so that's why we avoid cleaning our ovens. Um, so what I would recommend is that you always, maybe you're not gonna wash it after every use, but you at least clear out the crumb tray. I found that we obviously hadn't done that. And so crumbs, and as I already said, the onions, were falling in the back as we lifted it up. Um, they fell off the tray down to that back corner and that really was causing us a lot of problems. So at least empty out your crumb tray. We're gonna change our behavior and do that too. So um, that's one suggestion there. Uh, I don't know that you need all of those chemicals. Uh, we certainly tried a bunch of different things. What really worked out was steel wool and elbow grease. The chemicals, I, I don't know, maybe they soften something up a little bit, but really uh, that steel wool grabs things and breaks it off of the surface, I think just about the best. And, uh, and then you don't have to rinse out your oven uh, with a whole lot of chemicals. So I hope that helps. Thank you for watching so much and, uh, and stick around. We have lots of other content besides Ninja Foodie stuff. And so check out our Disney, our painting, our dog, uh, all the different stories of our DIY around the house. Thank you for being at our channel. We appreciate you so much. Be good to others. Bye-bye. Hey, while you're here, check out our other Ninja Foodie videos. We've got just tons of things to offer, so check out the playlist.